Hmm. No, myślę, że przejdzie. So I replied, um, I want to Polish my English. So they say uh, my, that my English is Polish enough. But okay. Uh, genetic programming. Uh, genetic programming basically is a technique uh, to solve problems that uh, are very hard to, uh, to, get, to get, uh, achieve goals that are very hard to achieve in another way. Like uh, we don't have a clear method to achieve the, uh, to achieve some sort of uh, to achieve that result, but we want, but we do know uh, how good the result is. For example, a good example would be uh, aerodynamic shapes. Uh, there's no clear uh, way to create, uh, there's no easy way to create an aerodynamic shape that, uh, but you can easily predict, uh, you can easily say how, uh, how uh, good the shape is uh, once it is created. So, genetic programming is uh, it's very, very good for such things because it's more like a trial and error uh, method, but it, gain, it gets better uh, each generation. It's, uh, it's based on uh, uh, biological, uh, biological theory of evolution, uh, where, there are, um, where living organisms uh, dice uh, breeds and uh, generally improve themselves over the time and was created by this guy uh, Charles Darwin when he was in Galapago Islands he uh, observed that uh, basically the um, organism, uh, organisms out there uh, gets better uh, at every generation uh, and well the, the, this evolution is quite, uh, this theory is uh, widely used. Well, there are some people that don't, don't think that the evolution is, uh, theory is correct, but uh, they might, I'm talking about creationists out here, but they might find this presentation quite uh, uncomfortable. So if there are any creationists here, I suggest you to leave. But okay, I don't say I didn't warn you. Uh, well. He created the theory of evolution. Evolution is uh, basically this is the first thing about uh, the evolution: the survival, survival of the fittest. Uh, only the best, uh, the most fit uh, organisms will survive uh, in given environment. And uh, when the environment ch change, so any other uh, cre uh, creatures comes to uh, comes there. Uh, the creature already evolved need to evolve even more, so they will survive, as we can see out here. And basically, uh, when they evolve, they get better and better, and that's that's how it all uh, works. And uh, in 1940. 57, I think, and there was an idea to make it, uh, to bring it to, to pro computer programs, so that computer pro programs can evolve as well. And it wasn't very widely uh, researched out, out uh, then because it requires quite a lot of computational power, but as the computer uh, gets stronger and stronger, uh, the idea came back and they brought quite a nice uh, results as I'm going to show you on this presentation. So, to evolve a program or evolve anything, first thing we need is to population. Population is a number of uh, organisms that, uh, well, the uh, virus and uh, the diversity is a, is a strength here, so the initial population is, should be as uh, diverse as possible and uh, based on this they can evolve to uh, many different uh, ways and, find, and uh, later find out which way is best for the given uh, problem. So when we have the population we need a fitness function. A fitness function is a uh, Way how to uh, win, how to is the way to find out which uh, program or which organism is uh, best suited for the given problem. Uh, 
this is um, arguably the most important thing in genetic algorithm and genetic algorithms and genetic programming. So uh, this is how we define our problem. So how we define uh, mm, how, how uh, based on this we find uh, we look, uh, find a solution for it. For example, in my pr previous example, it would be the simulation of. Uh, how well the given shape will uh, how how uh, will uh, how good will be aerodynamically. So uh, um, uh, as little so it should uh, bring as little resistance as uh, resistance as possible. Okay, and the last thing we need is a uh, breeding. Uh, breeding method because uh, besides the population and the fitness function we need to have a way to actually uh, improve the programs so as we see as we see it's as we see it is breeding so what is breeding actually it's uh, bringing the parts of the initial population of the and every generation to the next one but mixing it uh, getting the uh, extracting the best of it and uh, that way creating new generation which is supposed to be much better than the better than the previous one okay but how do we do uh, how do we achieve that if we achieve this as in programming as you say well uh, most of you uh, surely know that every program, uh, especially functional, well, every program is uh, possible to write on a, uh, as a tree of a, of a function. Well, it's if you know the Lisp or the Scheme or any other functional languages, it, 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 uh, you should uh, understand, much, understand it much better because, well, it's very easy to write, uh, write it down as a functional program. So we, right now we are looking at the uh, fun of the very simple, very simple uh, equation, which is cosinus or cosine of uh, 80 degree and uh, three plus three. So it's very simple, but that doesn't mean uh, that we cannot put on more variables and create uh, some more complicated uh, functions. Uh, and well, that approach give us give us way to breed the programs to as we as we look at the tree we can see we can see branches and the leaves and uh, breeding a tree uh, would be moving part of the one tree to the another switching them uh, be between switching the, uh, those between them and so on and so on so let's say we have a function like this we want to uh, we, we want to find out function uh, which will be which will solve this equation. Well, it's not an equation, but uh, d which will uh, uh, solve this function as go as well as possible. So this will be a fitness function, and it will uh, and will measure how, measure up how dif the difference between the results we got and the results of this equation when we put. Uh, uh, equal equal uh, input and so we need to create a population initial population it's not very complicated right here it's like two functions but it should be much more uh, much bigger in the re real world so let's create two completely random programs as you may see it's not very it's not that completely random but it's supposed to be random uh, in real world uh, Let's go with several random programs and see how they contact. Um, let's measure up which ones of those are best suited, uh, give us the best results. Let's get those uh, programs. It's possible like best half. It's not a very good idea to get only several top uh, programs. It's often better to get some of them, I mean, like half of population, the better half of population, then breed them uh, over, make crossovers, possibly create more than uh, one child from the given pair of uh, three or four uh, programs. 
so we will next population will be equal, will, will be equal in number than the first one, than the first one but it will be better because it will be created from better programs initially so let's say that we have these two trees and we want to breed them together to get uh, to get better results as you can see uh, the um, left tree gives a very good gives us very good uh, well quadratum power par, quadratum part of the equation so x uh, power two and the second one gives basically the rest so three x plus thirty so if we breed them together so replace the ten with this whole second tree we get our function exactly. So that will be perfect uh, solution for the given problem. So hopefully at the end, this is how what, what should uh, come out of the, uh, of the genetic program, we, genetic algorithm we made. Okay, so PyEvolve. Uh, PyEvolve is a Python uh, library for genetic algorithm, algorithms and programming. Mm. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, you can find them. It's not very well. It's not very uh, well. Last update wasn't well, was quite a long time ago. It's like 2010, but it works, and uh, you can find it on the link here. And basically, it's uh, it's not very well documented, and it's not very easy to understand. To be honest, it took me quite some time to get along with it, but it works well. And uh, once you uh, learn it a bit, uh, it gives nice results. Okay, so let's uh, let's see at the sample sample program. I want to show you the sample alg uh, genetic algorithm created using PyEvolve. Okay, so this is our fitness function. Fitness function gets a chromosome uh, which is uh, which is given uh, current chromosome is current uh, organism we work on. So in the uh, in the example I want to show you, it will be one dimensional uh, list of integer integers, because I want to uh, what I want to achieve is to find. Uh, in that, in, that, in that case, not a function that will produce uh, the results, but the results themselves. Uh, so integers uh, closest to the function we, uh, to the function uh, we want. So the uh, x, uh, x power to two plus three x plus thirty. Uh, so we want uh, to achieve the best. Uh, we want to find the results uh, of the uh, this function in the area from 0 to 20, I think, or 10, I'll see. So, this is our fitness function. What it does is, uh, first we need to uh, declare the score. So, this initial score is 0, and it, in our case, it will be best score. So, the, there's absolutely no uh, difference between uh, the program we have, uh, between the result we have and the result we want. So then we iterate over every every uh, every integer in the chromosome given, uh, and we measure up the difference between uh, difference between what we, uh, between the product of the function. And in that in that case, as I said, the lesser the difference, the lesser the score, the better. Okay. Here we create a genome. Genome uh, is a pool of every, pro uh, well, initial is of every generation actually. Initial genome is a one dimensional list, as we can see out there, uh, from ten, uh, uh, from made from 10 random integers, random, uh, random uh, numbers, and uh, Every uh, at every generation, it will uh, cross over between uh, and eventually produce the uh, result. Okay, 
So next time, next line we want to uh, next, next line he uh, sets up an evaluation function we declared before. Uh, so a fitness function. Initializator is uh, mm, initial. As I said, it's an initial. Uh, it's an initial initial uh, population. So in our case, it uh, one dimensional integer list. There are quite there are plenty of uh, those. I mean, the different there are quite some uh, different genomes, including the genetic programs or two dimensional list. Genetic programs is a uh, the tree and well, there are three and sub, there are sub uh, subset of trees, which is genetic programs, and every uh, every genome has their own set of initializers uh, and mutators. Mutators is something I didn't mention before. Uh, well, if but I'll get to this later. Okay, uh, so there are quite different, quite some g different genomes. In that case, I took a genome one-dimensional list of ten random integers. Okay, so mutator, mutator is uh, something that changes, but it dis uh, every generation, but it didn't, it isn't present in uh, generations before. So, let's say we made our ten uh, different uh, integers, but the results we want aren't necessarily out there. So we need to allow the program to, in, to input their own uh, changes in the genome, so eventually it, it can find uh, the best solution uh, from whole solution space, which, which isn't uh, necessarily in the first initial uh, population. Okay, and this is the heart of the thing. Uh, this is the generations we uh, and the generations and the evolution itself. So first, we declare a genome. Uh, we make a um, from the constructor quite uh, quite uh, clear, I think. Then we set up generations. Generations is the number of iterations we will iterate through uh, during the evolution process. Uh, which is 1,000 here. I think I don't think it's. Uh, no, as I experienced with this particular function, it will. It doesn't need as much. I think it uh, it produces some quite well, quite good results at 200 maybe. But it's often uh, said that it's not always very good to create large generations. It's better to create uh, to make make more generations uh, instead. There are two different ways to end the um, genetic program. We can either fix the, uh, iterate over fixed number of generations as we do here, so after 1,000 generations we'll see what comes out, or we can set a termination, uh, termination, uh, oh, okay, I lost the word. We can say how much termination condition, oh. Uh, we can uh, say what we actually want to achieve and what uh, what score is uh, is, is satisfi satisfactory for us. So after, uh, we will iterate over the generations, uh, and we will evolve the uh, evolve the programs or uh, variables until we we'll, uh, will get a score we want. Yeah, in this case, I fix. I, I set up fix. Set up a fixed gener fixed number of ten, one thousand generations. Next line uh, is we set a minimax. So we define uh, whether or not we want the fitness function to be as good, as big as uh, as big as possible, uh, or uh, as low as possible. I mean, uh, in our case, we want the difference to be as small as possible. So we set minimax to minimize. Uh, as you the, as you might think, there are maximized. There are other things like maximize. I don't know if there's any other uh, conditions, but in that case, it's minimized. And evolve. Evolve is the heart of thing, and it will. We set up the. It evolves, and it every ten generation, it uh, prints out our uh, statistics. So the. Uh, how well actually it uh, our uh, population contacts. There are quite well, there are much more uh, 
settings to set, but I suggest you for uh, I suggest you to experiment with it because uh, well, also that it gets more complicated on the way. Okay, then we print best individual. Uh, as I said, in that case, uh, it conducts very well. I mean, the best individual was ex exactly the same as the result I wanted, and it was achieved after like, like as I said, like 200 generations. So. It will be more optimal uh, if, it, if I would uh, make it lesser, but uh, it did work. Okay, well, I think I overestimated the length of the presentation because uh, now I well, now I want to show you the uh, real life examples of uh, genetic programs and genetic algorithms being used in a variety of. Uh, variety of topics like first thing is antenna nasa um, i don't know when but not so long ago uh, made a program to get a um, deep space uh, to create deep space antennas uh, using genetic algorithm uh, algorithms and that bizarre looking antenna which i don't think any uh, any engineer would think of while well, it doesn't look very well and no one would would think that it would actually perform much better than anything uh, they had uh, made by engineers themselves. But quite, there are some other uh, versions of this particular antenna of these uh, antennas. I mean, but uh, this one was this one and the others were quite well quite, work quite well, much better than the ones engineers made. Okay, Evolisa. That's something very interesting because uh, that's how I don't know. I think that uh, that particular uh, case was uh, making uh, Mona Lisa from like 50 pentagon, uh, pen, not pentagons. I mean the uh, 50 figures with alpha and so on. And uh, how how good Mona Lisa we can create with these 50 figures? And I can say after 2000 years, it looks pretty much like the original thing. So uh, that's that's a very interesting thing. I mean, I was um, I'm I am in, uh, experimenting with the image image manipulation and image, image creation in, using genetic programming, and I haven't achieved anything like it now until now. But I'm working on it. It's possible, and it looks very nice. And the last thing I want to show you is uh, something created long ago, because in, uh, 94, in 1940, uh, 1994, uh, this is a program, this is a uh, result of the evolving creatures. For, uh, I mean, they are supposed to be able to move to do things like real creatures do in water and in uh, in normal you know, on, on ground, and I want to show you how it how it works because it does this look quite quite well. Okay, let's keep it. Yeah, for example, uh, well, they do look quite the real uh, creatures, but uh, not every not every uh, creature like like this one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> they are creative in their own way of movement. Of uh, this one was, so I think, one of the fastest. <laughs> okay, let's keep it a bit because um, here we have. Uh, let's let it, let, let's let it buff, buffer a bit. Oh. This is uh, when, how they uh, walk on the ground, so not swimming anymore. This, this, this was, I think, the fastest one. The jumping one. This one uh, chases the red dot, much like cats do. Uh, well, they look bizarre, but, I, uh, but they do work. And the last thing. Well, this is this is uh, the two creatures. Uh, the two creatures uh, creatures uh, want to get as close to the cube as possible. So 
they find quite a, quite a several ways. They interact with each other, they want they beat the crap off each other and so on. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and they still they steal the cube. <laughs> Well, that mm, most certainly looks like the real, uh, real life examples because they actually fight with each other. Okay, and that basic, uh, basically is uh, all I wanted to show you. I don't know how well it went. I think the, well, I think the. Uh, the presentation was supposed to be to be longer, but sorry for that. Okay, so any questions? Hmm. hmm. <laughs> yeah. So are you using sorry. What for? What's your reason? What's my reason to work with it? Because well, first one is very inspiring, and the second, the first thing is very inspiring, and sec the second is, uh, as I said, there are quite there are quite a lot of. Uh, use cases which any other method I know of does don't work. I mean, the creation of the antenna, do you know, uh, uh, there are no creative programs. I mean, cre programs cannot create anything, normal programs. This is the creative, uh, this is the place where, this is the algorithm that should, uh, that can create something that uh, normal engineer would, wouldn't think of. Uh, usually the programs is only for, uh, for example, validating or helping the, uh, to understand the data or the results. Though these programs create something new and they do it by themselves. And uh, as I said, it's very, very experimental uh, and it's not very, very uh, it's not very, uh, well, it, do, it doesn't have much, that much of uh, normal everyday use. But there are cases when it's very useful, like, pro, well, uh, like making an antennas or an aerodynamical shapes, which is a very, um, well, let's say, useful uh, case. Yeah. And then, okay. Uh, yeah. Um, have you found any an example of using it in a real life? Antennas. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is this in your, is in your real life. No, in my real life, no, because uh, as I said, it's much it's much more about ex experimental thing, and only the uh, corporations like well, NASA isn't corporation, but uh, only well, it's uh, it isn't uh, it isn't sure sure that it will produce the results. So normal normal corporations companies don't invest in such thing because. Not many normal corporations have problems like they like it. Yeah, not and not every corporation creates antennas or aerodynamical shapes or any other form of design that uh, is supposed to be to conduct better than any other. I mean, uh, it could be very useful in normal life if we could, for example, create fitness function of uh, I don't know the pretty. Pretty, how pretty the image is. Yeah, we could create the pretty images completely new and uh, completely create pretty images if you only could uh, create a function that will measure it up. So you can use humans for that. There are like yeah, uh, for, for uh, of, uh, genetic, pro uh, genetic algorithms with human interaction. So, yeah, so yeah. the human are the, yeah, the yeah, fitness function. Yeah, of course. There's thousands of generations for humans too. Yeah, but we, yeah, it takes time. That's the problem with humans because there are two thousand generations. Every generation for several hundred uh, images. Well, it will take a lot of humans or a lot of time. So it will be very cost. Uh, and of, uh, the humans not necessarily can produce uh, the valid, re uh, valid answer because, um, for example, if we were to measure up something like beauty. Every human can have uh, every human will have other definitions than beauty. So basically, it, we could we could create something beauty for one person, but this one person should click a lot of uh, times to measure up every every organism in every generation. Yeah, like millions of it. So yeah, that's that's the problem. I mean, 
I was thinking about experimenting with it, but I don't think I have resources to achieve any formidable results. Uh, yeah, so, all right, as I said, it was, uh, it, I think it was, uh, it, it was supposed to be longer, <laughs> but I guess, uh, no sorry? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think that's the thing. Well. What's next on agenda? What's next on agenda? Well, I think the lightning was, uh, this, I think this uh, uh, presentation was, well, I mean, uh, it was made in quite short notice. I mean, like a week ago, well, something like this, so I didn't, also didn't have too much time to prepare it. And no one else prepared anything, so I guess we can drink beer. I think that's a good idea. Okay, but... Uh, Any lightning talks, guys? Yeah. Getting prepared too. One here, one there. So, yeah. uh, I guess, thank you very much.